Welcome to this video where I'm going to walk you around my patio with examples of signs and symptoms of orchids that are going into dormancy, what I'm looking out for and how I respond, what I'm planning to do. We have a few abnormalities, which I also want to talk to you about because there are certain factors I would be doing right now, but based on the abnormalities, I thought this is a perfect time to show them to you and my thought process, how I'm going to deal with them moving forward. But let me introduce our eye candy for this video to you. This is Dendrobium Victoria Regina. She is not a candidate for going dormant, but she is so pretty. We hardly see her blooms, so she is our eye candy, and I hope that you enjoy seeing her while I try to add other footage to make this video more visually appealing to the best of my ability. Now, Signs and symptoms of dormancy normally are the leaves are going yellow and uh, if you don't know whether the leaves are going yellow once they've dropped that is a definite sign that the orchid is either heading into resting mode or is going dormant. Some orchids will hold on to their leaves much longer depending on the climate. My winter temperatures drop to 5 degrees Celsius, not all the time but sometimes they can do that. That is the minimum that I've experienced with the exception of one night that went to four, so that doesn't count. However, some orchids go into resting mode. They hold on to their leaves as it would be with my Lelia perinei, but let's talk about the deciduous ones and how to go about observing what is going on and the treatment we have to give these orchids so that we don't make a mess of things and hopefully get the blooms come spring. Now, my Dendrobium polyanthum looks fabulous, beautiful and green and lush. Oh, but don't be fooled. Some of the canes at their bases are losing their leaves. So a little bit of a dig and there we have yellowing leaves. This orchid is heading into her dormant or resting mode. I will use the phrases interchangeably because pretty much as far as I'm concerned, they are the same. There may be a little bit of a variable, but for this video, that's not here nor there. Anyway, when I see what's going on with my polyanthum, that is when I stop fertilizing. Because you can stop fertilizing very, very radically. The metabolism of the orchids is such that by the time they go into dormancy, their whole process of heading into dormancy started about four to six weeks ago because that is the way hormones work and in conjunction with temperature drops. So if I had been fertilizing up to now, I can radically drop the fertilizer. I don't have to peter it down slowly because everything that this orchid had leading up to now is now stored in the canes. She is not going to be absorbing anything else. And eventually we'll just have bare canes to look at, which is a reoccurring theme in this video. <laughs> On the other hand, my Bensonier is already very, very far ahead. It's very obvious to see that the leaves are yellowing at the tips and it seems to be happening radically, not all at once, but the leaves are not starting from the base, moving forward like the polyanthum. Instead, it's probably going to happen about two or three days. One day I'll wake up and uh, they're on the floor or I can just lightly remove them from the canes. No strong tugging. If you want to groom your deciduous orchids, make sure you just give them a light rub and see what falls off willingly into your hand. Do not pull. You don't know if that's going to cause some damage and allow some pathogens to enter in. And um, we don't want that. So Bensonia is also heading into dormancy. However, Bensonia still has active growing root tips. So now what? Well, active growing root tips to me says she is starting to go into resting phase, but is still absorbing nutrients via her roots. They would not be active as we will see in other examples of orchids going dormant where the root tips will close. So there I am reducing fertilizer levels, not the radical stop as with the polyanthum because she still is in active growth. When I see root tips, I want more. I want them to grow for as long as possible. I fertilize. However, now at half strength, and I will do that until the root tips stop growing, which they eventually will. That is when I stop fertilizing. Compare what I just said with the Dendrobium tortilli, which is a classic example of an orchid that has still got lush green canes. 
However, we have leaves which are showing clear signs of going into dormancy because they are going yellow, but those are canes from two years ago. So we have to know our orchid and be able to differentiate what we are looking at. There are some orchids that will not shed the leaves on their newest canes, but they will start showing signs of dormancy on canes from a year ago. And that is what we need to take note of not what was happening with this year's growth on some orchids and i will get to dendrobium nobili types after we've discussed dendrobium tortile oh and yes she is in leca and self-watering as well so her roots will never ever go completely dry either and i will explain that also when we get to dendrobium nobili types however this one is now not getting any fertilizer just like the polyanthem not because i'm not seeing any signs of dormancy on the new canes but i'm seeing it on the canes that were grown in 2021 in 2023 just to be very specific the new canes of this year 2022 will be the ones that will show us when the orchid is heading into dormancy so make sure that you know your orchid that older canes can drop their leaves while the newest growth canes won't she is still heading into dormancy and fertilizer has been cut off however i am the jew more of that later as difficult as it may be let's leave the eye candy for a moment and have a look at some dendrobium nobili types in the background, I have a Dendrobium Nobili Complex Hybrid, a no ID, the one that you buy at your big box stores, you know, the regular commercial ones. And in the front, I have a Dendrobium Nobili Species. The behavior should differ. It may or may not. That is how the orchid hobby goes. However, in my example, let me tell you if I had filmed this clip yesterday, I wouldn't have remembered to tell you what I'm going to tell you now. When it comes to signs of dormancy in Dendrobium nobili hybrids, as with some other orchids that we're going to see, the color of the leaves turns a little bit lackluster, it loses its vibrancy. That would also imply that the phase of the canes getting chubby and as fat as they can be has passed they are literally starting to wind down based on the temperatures now in my climate of course i can grow my nobilis outside all year round i don't drop to freezing however in order to get a nobili to bloom they say that you need to chill the nobili and then of course as a nobili goes into dormancy you're not supposed to fertilize so what to do well the first sign seeing the leaves go a little bit lackluster on a nobili type is rather difficult because they seem to have this beautiful attribute of maintaining a beautiful green color it is only the older canes that will drop leaves not the canes of the past season's growth as in the new growth of 2022 that have by now matured they will maintain their leaves However, as an orchid goes into dormancy that does that, the 2021 leaves will start to drop bit by bit. It's not a radical drop, it is a gradual drop. And as long as it happens on the older canes, everything is fine. On the new growth canes, there would be a problem which would have to be addressed. The newer canes should not lose their leaves until the following year. I hope that makes sense. However, look for the color, look for the lackluster, and when you see that, start reducing watering. Now, depending on how you're growing your orchids, I have mine in a self-watering setup. The Nobili Complex Hybrid is in Lekka, and the species is in Pumice. It doesn't matter what media I use, it is a self-watering setup, meaning that my root systems are accustomed to being wet. That means the velamen is not used to a wet dry cycle that means in my setup i need to maintain some form of a wet climate around the root system so as not to have the media desiccate my root system when it comes to me reducing watering i missed the surface of my pots that is all i do the reservoirs are relatively empty if the reservoirs start to fill up a bit because the root system isn't actively absorbing water, then that to me is a sign I can reduce my misting as well. 
So as a margin of control, I keep my reservoirs empty as the leaves start to show a little bit of a dull hue. And then if that reservoir starts to fill, I know I'm misting too heavily and I reduce it. And that is how I know whether I'm going too heavy handed with the misting. But I do not want my microfibers to ever dry out. Now, when it comes to fertilizing, of course, if an orchid is going into a resting phase or a dormancy, you have to also slow down and stop fertilizing entirely because there is no metabolism where the orchid can take up any nutrients. So basically it means you're wasting your fertilizer or you could mess up your root system entirely. Reduce fertilizing, stop the fertilizer once your orchid shows you sign it's going into dormancy. However, when we have complex hybrids, they also do some strange things. That's why they're called complex. <laughs> they are easier to grow. It doesn't make it complex to grow them, but they do strange things because of the petri dish of the gene pool that they have in their makeup. A species, in this case a nobly species, will show you different signals. So make sure that if you have a hybrid showing you symptom A and then you think, oh, well, I'm gonna apply that to my species that isn't showing symptom A, please do not. Every orchid, even if they are a nobly or a phalaenopsis, they respond differently. So why am I saying all of that? Because my complex hybrid is already showing nubbins. Know that the age of my complex hybrid here in my collection is now five years old. The cane that is showing nubbins is the one I grew this year. It's not coming from a keiki that I potted up two years ago. This is important to note as you assess what your orchid will require moving forward. This means my orchid has skipped the dormancy, the resting period entirely because I never saw the leaves go lackluster. I did see three or four leaves on older canes drop off, and that's when I started to reduce the watering and fertilizer. However, now it's showing nubbins, and we're heading into even colder temperatures. What needs to happen if that happens is to make sure to observe the progress of the nubbins, because they may show now, and I am thinking, okay, time to fertilize again, because, you know, woohoo, blooms. But... If the temperatures were mild leading up to a certain point and the orchid is interpreting that as spring, it's going to start showing nubbins. Now, when the temperatures drop considerably again and I'm fertilizing it, I now have to back off on even adding fertilizer, which I would normally do if I were in late winter, early spring, and this would be happening, I would start with fertilizer immediately. Being that it is a complex hybrid, I will not be risking keikis. I know my orchid, that is important to note as well, because some people say, do not fertilize her even at nubbin stage, you'll be risking keikis. No, not with this one. Basically, when an orchid shows signs of active anything, root growth, new roots, nubbins, anything, when it comes out of a resting phase, it's time to fertilize and help the orchid push with a little bit of good stuff after it has been starved for a while. However, because my temperatures are going to drop considerably in about a week's time, I am not going to apply fertilizer because I want to watch how the nubbins are gonna to react to when we go down six degrees compared to the other nights leading up to this point. I hope this makes sense, but it is important to note that if I were to apply fertilizer, it won't be doing the orchid any favor if she starts to slam on her brakes when the temperatures drop, it is best to hold off and wait. It is such an early stage if you see nubbins early in your normal resting type dendrobiums that little bulges, there's still plenty of time and room for observation. If she doesn't stop the progress of her nubbins and we are well into December and around Christmas time, which, oh goodness me, is six weeks from now, <laughs> If those nubbins keep progressing, then she'll have herself a lovely, lovely Christmas brunch, I'm telling you. And even if you're watching this during the summer at some point in time, if you're thinking, well, I need to wait six weeks, only wait if your temperatures are going to do something that is opposite to what the orchid is doing. Normally, nobly hybrids go into a resting phase before they show nubbins because of a radical temperature drop and exposure to cold temperatures. Normally, 
this is an abnormality and like I said if I had filmed this clip yesterday then I would not have remembered this point so I hope that also helps. Another thing of course the species in front of it is now on my radar as well because these orchids live next to each other it gives me a fantastic level of observation as how a species behaves in exactly the same conditions as opposed to a complex hybrid so she is on my radar because she is not showing any signs of nubbins I cannot even see her foliage going lackluster so in seven days eight days when the temperatures drop that radically well for them it's going to be quite a hit <laughs> we're going to see if that nobly starts to reduce a little bit of its vibrancy within the leaves and that would indicate to me it is going into dormancy by now i am already not fertilizing this orchid anymore because the canes have plumped up enough and I don't want to be pushing something into an orchid that within a certain period of time it cannot use hence only water only misting and only controlling to see if the reservoir fills up because the orchid is not even absorbing the water I'm misting with my media needs to stay damp that is the way of the setup I do not grow in a wet dry cycle should you grow in a wet dry cycle an occasional misting is also highly recommended because no orchid goes without anything over an extended period of time so pretend you are due give your orchid once or twice a week nothing more but just the same replica of what dew would provide on the surface of a branch or wherever the orchid would be growing in the wild there is always some form of moisture available and i like to pretend that i am the dew <laughs> the roots in a wet dry cycle culture do not need to stay damp that is completely separate from what I'm doing with LECA and self-watering. If you have any more questions, I used to grow in organic media. I also used to grow in wet dry cycle, obviously. So ask in the comments and I'll be able to be more specific. Having spoken of lackluster leaves, I've got another candidate and I hope that we can still take advantage of the beautiful sunshine. Moving on to the next example. Here is my dull and lackluster looking Neophenicia falcata almost lackluster we are still seeing a little bit of shine and glossiness on the newest leaf of this fan do not be fooled by that the rest of the orchid is looking lackluster and dull yes there may be water droplets on her leaves but the vibrancy of the green cannot be mistaken when she is in active growth even if there is a bit of dust on the leaves this orchid also lives outside in my climate all year round because she can tolerate it and the indoor space is somewhat to capacity so while she lives outside she has her active growth and her new leaves are all shiny and beautiful and she has active root tips now her root tips have closed over and she's starting to look dull that doesn't mean that there is a problem that only means she is going into her resting mode compared to when hopefully in spring if all goes well through the season we start to see the root tips start to grow again that is her waking up out of her resting mode but lackluster compared to nice and shiny you see that the leaves don't look as vibrant anymore even the newest leaf up here it still has a bit of gloss but it is not as brilliant and vibrant green as it was four days ago so she has been shutting down in the past week I have noticed her becoming a little more dull which is a shame however it is at this stage that I am the Jew there has not been any fertilizer applied for quite some time now I worked her to some strength for the coming stressful months even though she's resting but I've been applying calcium and magnesium no seaweed no growth hormones and when I noticed that she was starting to shut down about a week ago that also stopped and just because she's in a LECA and self-watering setup it doesn't mean that the reservoir is full in my case the same treatment applies I missed her and then if I see the reservoir filling up that means I'm misting too much and I can pull back and gradually reduce my watering in accordance to what I'm seeing in the reservoir meanwhile my microfibers will never dry out if these are set up in a classic setup with the sphagnum moss around them then it is so much easier to leave them alone because they obviously get to stay dry for much much longer even though the sphagnum moss should go crispy for some time 
it is not advisable if your humidity levels are low to leave them without any kind of misting or some kind of reprieve so they don't dehydrate and desiccate and then you will have difficulty playing catch up when they wake up because when these guys wake up they wake up fast and you want to be ready for that they shouldn't weaken over the winter months just because we're keeping them dry for too long just remember as a point of reference you are the dew you are not the pouring rain they don't need much but they do need a little bit now and then in the example of ground orchids i just want to add in an update because just recently i made a community pot of my bletia striatus and we saw active growth in the middle of november and that is insane this orchid is showing me all the signs it's going into dormancy it's losing its leaves very quickly and it should be going to sleep and then let the weather conditions take care of it as and how the weather is in my case growing it in a pot it's outdoors all year round i don't add any water unless for example we have an entire stint of six to eight weeks of absolutely no rain and then i make sure that my media isn't exactly saturated but just a little bit of a trickle here and there because this pot is semi-hydro now <laughs> based on the repot and what i saw we have six active new growths in this pot that means active growth the orchid is waking up before she even went into dormancy fully and i should be fertilizing however once again just like with the dendrobium nobly that we saw i'm gonna wait these growths have enough energy stored with all the other little tubers in there i am not going to be putting any fertilizer into this pot until i see how the orchid responds to a radical temperature drop because the last time she woke up for me was in January and not in the middle of November. And at that point, I went in with a fertilizer and said, well, hello, here I am to help you wake up. I bet you're hungry, but not this time around. So in your decision-making process, when you see certain signs about your orchids going into dormancy, know that if it is abnormal, but you're still way ahead of the season of where it gets really cold, wait. If they are waking up, it is because the weather is playing tricks and they think it's spring or whenever their waking up season is. But wait, if your conditions have as yet to deteriorate further, because the orchid may then just stop completely what she's doing and actually go into resting mode to then wake up when the conditions return to something more favorable. Nature has its way of balancing things out and we can get too eager, too quickly, too excited and say, well, she's an active growth, I'm going to fertilize it. Uh-uh, not if it's not according to what your temperatures are gonna do for the next two, three or four months. To finish off, we have ourselves a little bit of a different eye candy. Fall colors through the canopies of a dendrobium of film. I mean, how can you not? Yes, I don't like to see what I'm seeing because in about a week, 10 days, I'm just going to be seeing canes. <laughs> All the leaves will drop, but it looks pretty with the sun shining through it at this point in time. So dendrobium of film clearly heading into dormancy you can see how quickly the leaves are senescing even though some at the bottom haven't even begun yet there is no fertilizer for this orchid anymore either because she also doesn't have active growing root tips but because she's on a mount she gets misted every single day in my climate because i do not have the humidity to be able to counteract the dry air to keep her happy and somewhat sustained throughout her resting period these canes should not shrivel this is not part of the plan None of the orchids I showcased today should show any signs of shriveling throughout their dormant period. And especially the orchids with leaves on them, like the nobly types, they do transpire and they will lose water through their leaves even if it is only marginal and gradual. But a lack of humidity keeping orchids like those dry for so long the canes will start to shrivel and that is not what we want throughout this whole process so this orchid being on a mount will get missed it every single day however the fertilizer has stopped as soon as i saw that the base leaves were starting to turn yellow oh my goodness i am looking forward to a magnificent show next year so i'm hoping that i wasn't talking in circles and if i was 
bring me back to my train of thought in the comments. Let me know if there's anything I should be more specific about or what did I mean when I said X, Y, Z and I didn't get back to it. And I'll be so happy to clarify. I do apologize if I did talk in circles, but I thank you for staying and watching to the end regardless. If you found this video useful, maybe you didn't find it useful, but it was fun to watch anyway, would you please consider giving it a good like? That would be so appreciated. Thank you so much. The usual YouTube-y things as well. Sharing, if you haven't subscribed, that would also be much appreciated. Welcome if you consider subscribing on this video. Appreciate having you here. Let me know that you are here so that I can welcome you properly. And now have yourselves a fabulous day on one condition though, please, that you stay safe. And it's funny how YouTube does it. There will be a video and a playlist showing up right about now for you to have another goo at. <laughs> I'll see you soon, hopefully. Take care. Bye.